Hi there, Paula Connor here. Today is Monday the 27th of April and I have a video I want to share with you that was recorded yesterday. Uh, we had our very first round table discussion and I was joined with a real powerhouse of incredible spiritual teachers. A real divine feminine gathering. I was joined by Magenta Pixie, Laura Eisenhower, Christian Van Wilk, Nina Starsong, and Tara Perry, as well as myself. And we discuss a lot of topics about what is happening on the planet right now, the shifting consciousness. We talk about multidimensionality, the current uh, scenario that's happening, the control structure, and many, many other topics that I'm hoping will help you potentially answer some questions that you might have had or maybe even help you reconcile some of the things that you're witnessing in our world. So please do check in, have a look, and uh, we'll talk with you in a bit. Cheers. Right. We all rise together. Thank God we have each other. I, I'm, I'm just hitting a lot of walls lately, just totally overworked. Nervous system is just like, so I'm doing my best, but I start my morning off with all Yay, sorts of- what, it, what is that? Is that wild blueberry powder? It's got, lots of different fruit in it. It's got uh, all sorts of herbs and powders and uh, protein. It's just, yeah, everything yeah. I could possibly think of. The there, chocolate in it there, Laura. What'd yeah. you say? Yeah. Have you got the raw chocolate powder in there? I don't have the chocolate powder, but I just ordered some, uh, some cacao with all sorts of cool mushrooms and just really trying to stay yeah. neutrified. And discipline. I did ashwagandha when uh, my nerves were fried out, like, and I had ashwagandha in my smoothies and it completely sorted me out. And of course, brie. Uh, <laughs> yes, I do have ashwagandha, but I'm going to make sure to put more of it in. Yes. yes. And breathing. Oh, yeah, so actually, you know, I think you guys all know that I teach the heart math program, right? On how to connect in with the heart and the autonomic nervous system is connected, hardwired to the heart and the brain. So when you can slow your breath down, get yourself into coherence, which is when your mind, your thoughts, your emotions, and your heart are all synchronized, uh, you can really settle the autonomic nervous system down and you get into coherence. And as you guys know, when we're in coherence, we can connect directly to the higher realms and be in equation at that level. I think Nina's having a hard time joining Laura. Yeah, uh, maybe we should just go for it. Or are we kind of something on the channeling part there that you were just saying about Paula? Because what I find as well, because we're all really open and really sensitive, it's really important we keep our, our bodies really healthy and happy and soft and passive, really yeah. passive and grout and open because we're channeling large amounts of energy, right? Yeah. And almost the more we open to receive, the more we get. And it's like we have to get our heads out of the way and kind of just let it happen um because otherwise the nervous system it's like the fuses start blowing don't they in yeah. our systems because we maybe don't understand like when we break it down and analyze it logically or whatever that you know we don't understand maybe what the whole thing means and then we can get stressed out trying to figure it out and trying to you know catch up with all the detail and feel that urgency of sharing but it's like oh, just being the channel i think we do f so much more than we realize just being the conduit to allow that energy down and through into the body and connecting on the earthly level. And that's actually enough in a lot of ways. That's a, that's a, that's a huge amount and just be passive and soft to let that happen. Yeah. That's my experience. I think that's very much what I would call the crystal way. The passivity, standing as the crystal, drawing down the energy, bringing down that channeling and holding space for that. The indigo energy, energy is different. It's more action. Yeah. Like me and Laura are, are more indigo. But we complement each other. The divine feminine is really made up of the indigo and crystal mm -hmm. energy. Complementing yeah. each other. No, I completely relate to the indigo action. It's yeah. just being at, like, I'm go, go, like Chrissy knows me, I'm always creating and doing but then it's like just balancing it That's out balance. because we can't we're not you know we have to be self-sustainable you can't just go at it constantly no. because no. you will burn out, burn out. Burn out. so we have yeah. it's just about balancing yeah and just listening to our bodies and yeah i can't yeah. stuff when i have to and people are pretty understanding because yeah. i got my kids that just moved home we got a house guest coming and i'm just like ah but anyway 
But yeah. yes, thank you for those reminders. And, and just, yeah, dancing with it, flowing with it. We were talking about that a little bit yesterday. Yes. Just, did, you like the title? did you like the title I came up with? I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. Was really you guys good. had a chat yesterday? That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yep. So, uh, you know, I was kind of, here it is, 11-11. That's so perfect to Eastern time. Hmm. I wish. Uh, I was hoping that, as I say, since we were together, that we could, uh, as a collective, what I wanted to do at the end was some forgiveness work at the really uh, high, dark, dark, dark level. Maybe we can do that towards the end, see if we can clear some of the muck. And that's a really great uh, segue into kind of what, what I want to just talk about, like, what are we noticing individually in our own lives in the internal world over the last week? Because that might provide some good clarity and guidance for, for anybody that's listening. So one of the things, if I, if I may start, one of the things that came up for me and this is as a result of your, the, the videos that you released last weekend, Magenta. Definitely family kind of like, you are crazy. <laughs> we don't want to, you know, you, you, you're a little bit different. We don't want to talk to you. The other thing was trust. A huge thing was trust. And like I shared at the beginning, right, that song came on, Only God Knows Why, when I was like, okay, what do we talk about? So it was trust. I wasn't trusting. I was having a little bit of doubt. And it really surprised me that, Magenta, you had shared that that happens on occasion. And with my other guides too, they, they uh, have, or teachers rather, they have moments of that too. But then I got a rush of, of a confirmation. So what happened was, and I shared this to you, Magenta, in a message. I uh, was made aware of another one of the plans or one of the other dark uh, actions. So that awareness came into me. And what happened was I, ha I experienced two, two emotions, which was a bit trippy because I was like, oh my God, this is disgusting. But at the same time, it was like, oh my God, that's awesome. It can, it can be released now, which was really weird. Nina's coming in again. So then I tapped into it and specifically um, with the elixir that they view uh, as a power source or what have you, I tapped into that. Uh, I, I was led to tap into that. And I was able to feel, um, all the way to the bottom of, of what was underneath it. And it was absolute desperation and like longing, like a prayer, like, please. Like there was so much desperation for the light, for the love. And I really felt this incredible layer of compassion, which was interesting because I'd not experienced that before. And what, what my uh, team has been teaching me is that what you damn, damns you back. So that when you condemn another and say that person is not of the light, you put them in darkness and you tether yourself to them. So what you damn, damns you back. And what you place in darkness, you are there too. You put everybody else there because there's nothing outside of the light. And I just thought that that was kind of interesting. I wanted to share that. That's what was, that was new for me that I was able to sort of feel at that level of compassion because that is, exactly what we need to help people right now is forgive what they're seeing because we can see the um, global unrest happening in every town in every country all over the world, right? It's like it's the beginning of a, a major global protest. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I just wanted to share that was something that I had noticed. And the only other thing that um, I could share was there was a, a hypnotherapy session I think Alison Coy, I don't know if you guys have heard about her, but she kind of like, she shares um, what comes up with clients um, over a period of time. Nina's really having a hard time coming in and out here. And they talked about a blackened sky, that when we see this, when, when we're about to shift in octaves from this reality to the next one, they talked about paranormal. It seemed it was consistent that there would be paranormal, out of the normal activities happening. And one of them was a blackened sky. And I only remembered last week that a couple of years ago, I had a dream where I woke up, uh, or rather I was a lucid dream, stepped outside of a bungalow to the right, there was the garage, and there was this really, really black, black, smoke, smoke, dark sky. And I was like, um, am I supposed to be frightened? Because this is familiar. So I've actually seen that in a dream. And then there was a Taurus, purple and pink Taurus tube energy that was moving sort of like in like this, and then this incredible emerald green light in behind it. So 
wanted to share that, that it, it feels like, like we've, we've already, even though it might have something happened like three, four years ago, we're going to know like when it's on. And it feels like, like I said, batters up, get ready. <laughs> anyway, that's my little share. <clears throat> Thank you. It's Anybody awesome. else want to share what they've noticed in the, within themselves the last week that might help the collective? Well, I guess I could jump in. Um, I, I, I just, I feel so used to being on this mission that uh, Magenta brought up in our uh, discussion, just the code that we're born with that is here to assist humanity and also to participate in the human experience and, uh, you know, find just a relationship between the greater part of ourselves that really knows what we're here to do and understands the larger picture and doesn't really fear it. And it's like so well equipped to just like stand up and, you know, when these events take place on earth, we just know like, okay, call to action even more so than before. But then that human part of it that can so identify with the struggles that people are having and just, uh, just the importance of connecting those two, you know, places and really speak, uh, on a level that people know, like, you know, we're going through it too. We have our tools, perhaps we've been working with different modalities to make it a little bit easier, but I mean, it's not just like coming in the messenger and, 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 and not having it kick our butt sometimes. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm just really honoring what I need to do to stay anchored and integrated. Um, mm -hmm. and we were talking about that before we, you know, hit record, just, you know, getting the rest we need, having to listen to the body, because this is how we bust the mind control, because the mind control makes it very difficult for us to be healthy, period, because we're not listening to our internal guidance. So in these times, we're being called to go through this huge growth period and transformation, but it requires a lot of, um, you know, rest and, and, and processing. And, and I just, I feel like the family is growing. I feel like connections are coming together that are much more real with each other, much more just... Just on, on, on the level that um, we, 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 we discussed already yesterday, but it, it's just the soul family feeling, the feeling of, wow, I feel really safe with these people and you guys, <laughs> I'm totally feeling it. That's why you're bringing it out of me. Just that safety factor of, you know, family, you know, soulmate connections and um, being able to be really real with each other and be mutually supportive. And that facade model of, you know, or competition is just gone and, and just building relationships with you know, women too, I'm just thrilled. So that's what I'm noticing is I am so all about this right now. And I, I uh, just feel like, like elation and happy tears before we even got on. That's why I look a little weird, but, but, but how important this is and that we're doing it. You know, we intuitively know what needs to be done and we're making it happen. And, and everybody else has that internal guidance too. And I just pray that they just, just don't talk themselves out of it and say, I'm going to go for that. My inner voice is telling me this, that is the medicine for us to follow. So I'm grateful that I continue to do that. Um, but uh, I also know that I really got to take care of me and, and find the balance and being a Libra, it's, I guess my goal, but mm -hmm. man, what about anybody else? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hi, Hi Nina, nice to meet you. Hi. Hi, nice to meet you guys too. I apologize, we're having quite a storm and I couldn't get on for a while, so. Anyways, um, I'm happy to be here, and I just wanted to share a little bit. I very much relate as a star seed and as an indigo crystal child, so I've been working with a lot of that energy, and a lot of what's come up for me in the past two years in preparation for this time has been about sovereignty. And what I've been looking at really in my own life and then my clients and the people that are our family of light that are here to bring this new way of being is where are we not showing up sovereign in ourselves, but also in all of our relationships in the way that we relate to the world. And really that has helped me identify the mass amounts of programs that have been created to cause us to feel that we're not sovereign. And when you can observe those programs on yourself and in yourself, you can really begin to do that work, which is, okay, I'm not behaving sovereign. 
I'm believing that I'm attached to this or that this has chains over me or this controls me. And when you start to break that down, and yes, it is these draconian programs, but really it comes from this place of fearing these draconians. And so I've been really working a lot with the people in my life and the clients that I work with and kind of the group that I speak to and communicate with, which is there's absolutely nothing to fear when you reach that place of knowing that you're sovereign. And when you know that you're sovereign, you know that there isn't anything else that has power or control over you. And it doesn't matter what program it is. It was, it came from a place of fear. It came from this place of just trying to make you see that you're not part of this global universal law that all are a part of in which all are sovereign. So that's been the, the big breakthrough that I've been coming from this place of, okay, guys, you know, I know that this stuff is scary to see. I know that you don't want to know that there's sacrifice going on and there's all this kind of these things that are really triggering a lot of people's inner children right now into fear, even amongst the spiritual white family community, mm -hmm. just be able to say to them that this is happening so that you can see that something in you is enslaved or something in you is not sovereign yet. And if you shift into this remembrance that you came here as sovereign, all are sovereign, and you claim that in yourself, and you, you know, just say out loud, speak that out loud every day, I do not consent, and I have a will and a power to say so as a sovereign being. And it's been helping a lot of people a lot. So that's where I think um, I've been really focusing at this time, and the Pleiadians have been really discussing that with me. And remember, remember how you used to function before you came here. Remember that you came here into a non-sovereign world to bring sovereignty. And you maybe fell asleep for a little while on some level, but you always knew, no, 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 I came here for the time of awakening. And so that's, that's this time. And I'm just, uh, I'm just very, very extremely grateful for this time right now. And for all of you ladies that I'm so inspired by. So thank you. Anybody else? So who would like to go next? <laughs> I'm just, I'm really, um, thank you for saying everything that I need to hear right now, because I'm noticing I'm not in my usual clarity this week. I'm really struggling to tap in, to tune in, to, to make that connection at the moment. And I know that, um, you know, when I started making my films 10 years ago, I was on such a strong mission, you know, it was all about consciousness expansion. I knew that consciousness expansion would, would, you know, change the frequency so that we would burst through the limiting boundaries of the matrix. And now when I look around me, I just see this incredible awakening happening everywhere, you know, people that I never would have expected, you know, are now waking up. And so on the one hand, I'm so excited about that. And on the other hand, I'm like, okay, so my job is done. Mm -hmm. um, what am I doing here still? Like, uh, especially because where I'm living at the moment, there is a national telecom mast, but they also just illegally put up a huge telecom mast 50 meters behind the house, humongous. And I don't know if I'm making this up, but it really does feel like I'm getting highly affected by the radiation. And I can be talking and mid sentence, I'll be like, what am I talking about? Like, it's like I get blanked. Mm -hmm. um, and other, you know, like breathing issues I get sometimes and uh, like feeling like my skin feels really like burning and I'm really, um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting affected by, by external things at the moment. And I saw a video this morning of the plan that Elon Musk has uh, with the satellites, which form this grid around the planet, this entire grid. And, and I know people tell me, just focus on what you want, focus on, you know, surrendering into all the amazing golden age stuff that's going on. And I'd like to do that. But I'm really struggling with it because at the moment I feel like I'm like a horse in a stable and, and, the, and the 
stables are on fire and I can't get out, you know? It's mm -hmm. like, I do not consent to being microwaved by your silly games, you know? Like, so, yeah, I just need to be honest, like, and I don't mean okay, to put so a can I, conversation. Can we all do this together then for Chrissy? Can we all like just imagine the radiation that is around her and the structures that are around her? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this uh, to, to the devices. I know who you are in truth. I know what you are in truth. I know how to serve in truth. You are free, you are free, you are free. I lift those structures to the upper room. You have calm, you have calm, you have calm. Behold, I make all things new. And that is not me saying that as a small self, that's my higher self lifting what is around her to the higher uh, upper room, the higher level of consciousness so that it can be addressed mm -hmm. in the, by the light. And then Chrissy, I'm gonna say, you can come and live with me in Canada. If you right. That sounds nice. I think you nailed it there, Paula. It's that um, commanding, using that command from the I am absolute love, absolute light, I am the truth, and commanding everything to reveal its absolute truth. That's the law of the universe, and we know that, right? When you yeah. command something to reveal its truth, it must. And you use it three times, and it, everything gets revealed. The first time you command it, it might show a little bit, you command it three times. I've used this again and again and again in the last 20 years. Any energy in this known universe, you command it to come into its truth and it must and it will. And you that's reveal what it is. And you know, that's what you were talking about, Nina, the sovereignty. It's like knowing your power. And even that phrase, you know, I do not consent. For me, that's not even a reality that I want to even speak to, that it could even be a potential that something could affect me that I don't want to consent to. It's just not a thing. It's like, it's that command. It's that sovereignty. It's like tweaking it that tiny little bit and it just refines the connection, the vibration. And Paula, I really want to, first of all, everything that you're all saying is just filling me with so much love and emotion and gratitude to sit with you because it's just so true and real what you're all saying and it's so beautiful that we can come together and and share this but um paula coming back to what you said about you know the you know what do we want to call it the those desperate those desperate souls the ones that have forgotten the love that have forgotten who they are and have gone into some some place which is quite hard to retrieve a soul from but yet it's not impossible and it's you know, in fact, it's actually not very difficult when we come from that place, like you said, of absolute compassion, because you're seeing the, the real truth. You're seeing the deeper truth, not what appears to be on the surface, which is frightening. Right. Like you're saying, Chrissy, it does look frightening. It can make us react and have all these emotions. But it's like when we see through that and understand this is a human being whose soul is really trapped, really lost, and they're crying out for help. But also in that blueprint of the world in our soul, in our soul blueprints, this is all aligned now for this perfect time now. And each one has their blueprint trigger in the timeline that we're existing in for their own release, for their freedom, for their awakening. And I never ever doubt that. That is absolutely encoded into every being. And it's, you know, it's, a, it's like a symphony. It's like when, when each note gets activated, it's creating a, a beautiful harmony. So I, in that sense, I don't feel um, an urgency, but I do feel like what we can do is drop into that feeling of absolute love and forgiveness. Forgiveness for what we haven't understood or forgiveness for what you know, the pain and the suffering that has happened and release that from our own psyche because we've all suffered, you know, mm -hmm. a degree of abuse, trauma, sexual abuse, sacrifice. We've all done that. 
maybe mm -hmm. not just in this lifetime, but maybe many lifetimes over and the memories are getting triggered in us. That's why we're reacting and responding yeah. when we're seeing it externally. It's like, whoa, shit, this shit is coming up to the surface. Hallelujah. But oh yeah. my goodness, because we're all getting triggered with our own memories. And so to be able to heal and love and forgive our, our own pain and memories of that, and then being able to connect with our other you know, our others, our other selves, our other fellow human beings, no matter what game they're being, what role they're playing, but to to be able to love and forgive on the collective level. And I think that's super, super powerful. And it's something that actually Christy and I, we were talking about a few weeks ago, weren't we, when we did our conversation. And yeah, it's just amazing. So I love that you've um, spoken about that. Mm. This week- yeah, they're lost in the darkness. And Chrissy, you know, you and I both have one thing in common. I, uh, well, ayahuasca, Laura, I'm not sure if anybody else here has participated in the ayahuasca plant medicine. I have. Oh, cool, cool. So I feel like this is important to know right now. Um, so a year ago, January, I was there for the second time. And in my fifth ceremony then, which was the 10th, um, I made all of those claims with every ceremony I went through. And in the fifth one, there was... Um, the vision that I was shown were there were so many beings of light with flashlights coming into like the depths of darkness and rescuing all these beings. And I could see them all being brought up. Like if you can imagine a, a, a dark tube cave and up above there was like the sunlight, the blue sky, they were all being rescued and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Mm. Yeah, that was just a really cool visual that I was, I'm going to say, gifted with. Because when I came out, you know, they asked, how was your ceremony? And like, it was godlike. It was, I was so grateful. Because it feels like we're all, we're, like, it's rescue mission, right? In, mm. in a few ways. Anybody that's lost, like Akuna Matata, nobody gets left behind. Right. And understanding of Christ consciousness, not being coming at this from a religious perspective at all, is that everything and everyone is forgiven. Yeah. It's, it's all just like a big play, a big show. Look at what you do, you know? Yeah. 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 Has anybody been feeling their cellular cells and body feeling weird and light and like changing this week? Oh, yes. <laughs> like buzzy. I would say it's like it's bu buzzy. Definitely. Like kind of like somebody's just opened the roof and you're more out there, less grounded, so to speak but you're still in your body, but it just feels weird, like lighter, like mm -hmm. a little bit disconnected, a bit in and out, a bit like not, do you know what I mean? Um, I just, yeah, I feel like, um, like really buzzy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit what about you, Magenta? Sorry, Tara, sorry, I didn't, I didn't no there was a delay. I'm not cutting you off. <laughs> no I just wondered if anybody else had been feeling like that, like, Kind of disconcerting a little bit in and out of the body the picture i they give me is like all the cards are up in the air and it's frozen you know like it, there's a like there's a pop <laughs> right i love how you always describe things paula it's so cool you're so visual i can totally see it yeah that's what it fits totally feels like every single card is up in the air and then it's a freeze frame and it's like, wait, we're waiting for all the cards to drop. <laughs> yeah. So Magenta, what, what about you? I agree with every word you've all said. And it is really lovely for all of us to come together and create this connection and power between <laughs> us. Um, so yeah, every single thing you've all said, I completely agree with. What I'd like to add to that, though, is obviously we are looking here at a multidimensional reality and there are different truths and different actions and different ways of thinking within each dimension so i wanted to come to chrissy's comment because everyone else is speaking within the higher dimensions and ab absolutely we need to be there because those higher dimensional energies need to fall down into the third dimension to create this wonderful new earth that we're creating but what Chrissy is talking about is a third dimensional problem. And I have been in that same situation. Like Chrissy, I'm extremely sensitive to EMFs and to the, the towers and the masts and everything. 
And if one really has been set up by Chrissy's house and she's starting to feel those um, symptoms and those energies from that, I've been in that situation and no amount of prayer and praying and sending love and forgiveness and all of that higher dimensional stuff, no amount of that assisted me when I was in the vicinity of that tower. No amount of organite or crystals or rituals, nothing worked. The only thing that worked for me was to remove myself from that vicinity and I had to leave that place where I was living. There was nothing else that was working for me. I was simply just too sensitive. And it wasn't that I couldn't work with the higher dimensions. The synchronicity for me was being able to leave. So that is a concern. And I think we need to look at how we can help Chrissy on a third dimensional level to deal with this situation, because potentially this is something that's occurring across the planet. Now I am assured that global wise, this won't work that's where the higher dimensional connection comes in this whole sort of um higher than 4g situation that's being rolled out across our planet i'm assured won't work on a global level but that's not to say it's not going to come into effect in smaller pockets mm -hmm. in certain areas i'm not sure what kind of mast chrissy is living near uh, but i think we need to look at how how can she work with this situation in a third dimensional level in order that she is not put into a situation where she's fragmented and not able to mm -hmm. get clarity of energy because she's being affected by that. And also, you know, with all the satellites, this, this grid already, when you look in the sky, you can see them coming past thousands of them. So even if I was to remove myself, this is also like happening for others. You know, you, you can't actually go anywhere anymore. And I don't, like I said, I don't mean to put a damper on, on what we're talking about, but I'm trying to find a balance between being in my higher self and acting from that, but also having, dealing with what my consciousness is showing me and what I'm experiencing in, in, the, in the physical, like you said, Magenta. So... You know, what, what are we doing as a collective to, do we need to do something as a collective to deal with all these satellites or, or are there forces at work already to deal with this? I personally feel we need to come at this with every dimension. Now we are workers in the higher dimensions. Some of us work in multiple dimensions. There are individuals who are awake, but are just still third dimensional thinkers. They mm. completely ignore or reject any kind of spiritual energy. These are the individuals who go out there and, and make peaceful protests and write things on social media. And I just think if the energy is flowing, it isn't all just going to be total love and light we have to come down to like you were saying nina sovereignty it is about making a declaration of sovereignty there is an energetic where you do deny consent and i can understand what um um tara was saying how denying consent makes you think well why is there something there to deny consent to the point is there is something there to deny consent to within the fourth and third dimension, not within the fifth dimension, it's not there. It's mm -hmm. utterly pure. There is nothing to deny consent to. It doesn't exist in the new earth. It doesn't exist in the fifth dimension, but it does in the fourth and it does in the third. And we've got to work multidimensionally in order to deal with this situation we are in on this planet. Mm -hmm. And it's the mind control we're breaking too, because if we look at the third and fourth, that is when we start to move out of our lower chakras and all the things that are confining us into spinning in those energy centers of survival or questions of power or disempowerment or the emotionality of it all and the struggle that can come from not having the direct connect with the rest of it. And so as we move into that fifth and it's our, our, the frequency that comes out of our voice, that counteracts the frequency of dark weaponry. And so if we're all mind controlled and we're speaking programmings to one another, that, that stuff is going to you know, continue to cave in on us. But the more we speak, the more we share, the more we come together, that frequency that ripples out to the whole collective begins to you know, shift the planet in the way that our health would shift if we're putting good things in our body mm -hmm. and we're listening to what our body needs. And we're not handing it to somebody else to solve for us. That is the biggest 
crisis um, that's coming to a head is that somebody else tells us what drug should we take to cure something? What disease do we have and what's the prognosis? Uh, and uh, what our teachers and, and family members condition us to believe that this is just passed down generation to generation. And then we're afraid of not being loved in return if we begin to become that sovereign being, which we all are underneath it all. But, um, you know, <clears throat> the internal guidance is huge. And, and, and I'm just going to say this real quick. When, when, when people were forcing things on me, that certainty that I absolutely cannot do it took over every day, every word I spoke, every action that I took unwound me from the grips of these forces that wanted me to do something else with my life, wanted to own me on some level. And we all have a piece of, you know, that sort of trickery of you have no choice. And so the more we amplify, amplify um, what our own internal guidance is telling us without fearing it, without too much self-doubt, or if we have the insecurity or self-doubt pop up, you know, we, we, we don't allow it to dominate and make choices for us. We're like, okay, that's nice. I recognize that wounds there, but it's not going to make the choices for me. So when people are being pushed to the corner by these darker forces, yes, I totally agree. It's like the more we come together, the more we, we, we face it, not with battling it, but transmuting it through a frequency that we're able to bring into the physical plane because we make it a way of life and we inspire other people to join us by building the new earth um, as we, we, we call out justice and we educate the masses. We have to begin to rise in, in what's available uh, because if, if we don't put our attention on that, then I just feel like you know, the entanglement of it all is, is, is draining and wasting our, too much of our time. But, but it can't be ignored, it can't be denied, and we can't love light it away, absolutely. Yeah, I really agree with that. Um, before all of this happened, I was living in Paris, and Paris was definitely under a strong attack in the city with the riots and everything that was going on. Um, and it was a similar thing where I began to feel like I was constantly under this frequency attack and I kept trying to pray and essentially love lighted away. And it wasn't until I had to get super fierce and say, okay, I'm saying no to this, that my higher self finally got a hold of me and was just like, leave. You cannot be in this place. You need to physically be in another place and directed me where to go. So I think that's really important for us to pay attention to is, are you being told to physically relocate yourself? Like, it's really important to tune into our intuition right now because our intuition knows on, from that higher place, our higher self is trying to direct us saying, hey, this is coming and you need to leave before this comes. And it was about three weeks that I had after I had left Paris that the entire COVID thing happened. And the message that I had received was, leave Paris now or you'll be trapped. I didn't know why I'd be trapped. I just heard that and was like, I'm okay. I'm listening. I'm gone. So those are the types of things that I'm seeing that are happening as well as we really have to listen right now because we do get the warnings sometimes, but we don't always pay attention to them. I totally agree. I feel like I can speak to this because um, about 24 years ago, I was in a place of such, I know the, the EMS were different then, but I was in a place of such sensitivity that I literally like could barely function because I was feeling everything so acutely. And I know it's upped its game quite a lot since then. So, but I know what helped me then and what still helps me now. And is that is, um, like you were saying, Nina, kind of listening to the body's um, intuition and giving myself nutrition and food for my immune system and strengthening my physical body. But it was also a desire to be in my body and a choice to be in my body and a mm -hmm. choice to be on this, like you're saying, uh, magenta on the third dimension to go I'm not going to escape out of the try and be somewhere else or wait to be rescued but it's like bringing the the spirit deeper deeper into the physical anchoring into the earth energies of mother earth herself listening to her listening to our bodies it's kind of the same thing and just um, so one, you know, my body will crave spirulina and I'll just eat loads of it or macuna all of a sudden or cordyceps and my body will just tell me what I need. And that was a process of getting there from listening to other people tell me what I should eat. 
and then that not working or not wanting to or my body rejecting it and then going hold on what do i need so it is it's that all the answers are within being able to go what does my physical body need do i want to be in my physical body yeah am i can i be safe connecting to where i am right now on the planet or do i need to move and it's like where is my strong spot and when I made that choice, because I was definitely leaving, I felt like a 60 year old, it was, you know, older than that, you know, when I was in my early 20s, I was leaving. And so to, it was that choice of no, I'm going to be here. And a little bit of a fight, but it was more self love. It was like the, not a fight against being human or a fight against, you know, the EMS as they've got stronger and stronger. I've got stronger to deal with it. I live near towers and all kinds of stuff here. But it's like that saying, I will be in this energy. I will be strong and, and anchoring into the, the, the like the Mother Earth frequency, like I said, which is really supporting us right now. She's we all know, right? We're feeling her. She is stronger yes. and stronger. We feel the waves and it's like, whoo, and then it can go back down and we can feel that low, Chrissy. So I feel like that's what you're feeling. You know, one minute we're feeling the energy rush of the, oh, well, you know, the human resonance is going up and it's like, wow, we feel empowered and strong. And yeah. then as it drops back down again, you know, like the, 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 the pause in between the, the labor rushes, like Paula mm -hmm. was saying, that pause, wait, wait, stay, stay still in the eye of the storm. Whoosh, here comes the next one. But in that stillness, that's where we can spin into the self-doubt, the fear, the, what the hell am I doing here? Is everybody going to wake up? Is it going to be all right? Ah, it's all getting to me. You know, that's because it's our most vulnerable time. And, uh, you know, if you're a mother or you've given birth, you can, you know, that point. You, it's so like you've got to stay in the calm, in the eye of the storm, trusting, hold still, breathe deep, breathe deep into the physical body, anchor into the, into the body and that I am, I will, mm -hmm. you know into the self-love it's love it's earth vibrational love it's it's physical dimension that's what we're here for right it's not just love and light up there it doesn't work just up there that's castles in the air we can all do you know that's already exists it's about anchoring it or just existing just existing as we are on this third dimensional bringing the love deep into the body the listening deep into body the consciousness deep into every single cell even into your dna if you're if you're insensitive you can tune in and you know it can be really easy you can have the conversation out loud hello buddy what do you need you know listen and just start practicing that self-love relationship and i feel like that gets us through everything it doesn't matter what dimension it's cross-dimensional it doesn't it's it's all one really it's it's love is exists everywhere and and, uh, and bringing it into the physical right now is where it's you know that's where the desperation is. That's where it's most needed. That's where the fear is. And Chrissy, yeah. I just want to add that we know, like in my knowing, the collective has chosen to evolve. So this is a collective decision. So it, 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 it's not going to work. It doesn't matter what they try. It's funny because my, I, I know this, right? I, yeah. I totally well, know this. And you will never hear me speak like this. This is very rare for me. Normally, I'm like, I already saw the outcome 10 years ago. I yeah. already saw that the dark forces, you know, had to surrender and that the, the golden age was ushered in. I saw it. I went, I went there. So, so mm -hmm. this is the, the, the funny thing that can happen when we get sucked into that, that, that place. And I think it doesn't help when you're among 4G, 5G radiation yeah. it just makes it a little harder to tap in and so yeah it, i think that's just what it is because what you're saying everything you're saying i know that i know it's not going to last that's my higher self speaking i think yeah, we got to look at the programming oh sorry no i was just going to say i think what i can totally relate to that and have feelings like that as well and it's brilliant that you've spoken it out and yeah exactly what you were saying laura about actually reaching out and connecting together is actually like the ah oh. <laughs> that was me last week Chrissy I like cried for a whole day I felt like I like who am I who the heck am I to think that I can help change the world who am I to have a conversation with you guys right like I'm one of those people that have like 12 subscribers like I just started putting little videos and stuff out right like who the heck am I I felt like this teeny little unimportant person and then God love our sister sister Magenta puts out 
a couple of videos, it's like, oh, thank God. All right, it's not just me. Now I understand. I feel better now. You know, crying in the bathtub. Like, so thank you for telling me that I feel better. But that humility and receptivity, I think, just gives us strength because it's so temporary. And, uh, and I think that's what we're healing. I think that this is a mass healing of self-esteem. Our sense of identity is crumbling. A lot of people in the world that have invested in an identity that's not really authentic or true to who they are. So the thing is, if it was enough to just blast us with dark weaponry, they would just do that. But we need to be programmed first. They rely on the programming through the media, through the news, through religion, through what we you know, get from our ancestral patterns. And we have to bite you know, the bait for the rest of it to really create destruction. So when we look at all the things that are being targeted, sacred union relationships, hierogamic union relationships, our own self-love, um, the conquer and divide that political parties you know, put on us, the duality of being polarized to either this or that, and not being whole, not seeing all the different moving parts and not integrating in those fragments, I feel like that creates such an opening for these dark weapons to take it to the next level. And we're in a massive healing. We're helping to instigate this healing of how to um, come together so much and heal that the auric field is so protected that it just transmutes any weaponry as it hits it. But it's so important that you share what you do, Chrissy, because people all over the world are concerned about what you're concerned about. And no matter, no, no matter how spiritual we are or aligned with the light, it's not just going to be able to take it all down. This is a global issue that we all have to walk together with, like you were saying, Magenta. All of us count in this, and we're all going to have our days. Um, I certainly do every day. Like, it's, it's a huge part of my every day is to just crawl out of the human part of me and just be like, oh, my God. And, and yeah, I'm very sensitive, too. And there are all tools and modalities, but it's not up to us to just – you know, do this because we're, we're, we're born into this density that we have to share with everybody else. So we're going to be impacted by it. We're here to, tr to, to, to inspire one another to be the best of ourselves, but we're taking a huge risk. A lot of the light warriors and workers coming in to drop our energies into a physical vessel that is not like it is in the higher dimensions. And every yeah. single person has those memories of when they used to be that person. And we're really just reminding. And so we got to have all these pieces or else it's not realistic because we all are affected. And if those towers were near, it doesn't matter who it is, you know, it's going to, it's, it's going to create issues. And, and, and putting that voice out there is going to help people to say, wow, we want to act in our town and keep that from happening. So thank you so much, you know. And, and thank you for your wisdom, all of you speaking. So, I mean, I, I hope you're going to publish this, Paula, because this is such a, a great, um, topic for now there's so many people who are needing to hear this right now and all of you speaking thank you so much for this i think you should publish it paula as well for another reason because when um laura and i did our chat yesterday i noticed that people were feeling empowered doubly because there were two women there two mm. women saying the same thing I, I don't just mean women but this is very much as we know a divine feminine energetic right now to have a circle of women come together when people watch this they see that divine feminine energetic moving as the circle, as, as, as the harem, as the power structure, the high priestesses. We need to present that energy. And that is what the nine mean when they say united you stand, showing this unity, this togetherness. So much power is created when we get together and we are speaking on this higher level about third dimensional real world, physical world things, but we're still using higher dimensional energy and higher communication in order to communicate about this and to show that to people brings them into that energy and I'd also like to draw attention to Nina it was so profound what you were saying about the voice that said to you you need to leave otherwise you will be trapped here and you listened to that voice that is such powerful connection and synchronicity and we are all potentially in that situation we don't know everything is very unknown even though we can see the futures and we can see the timelines we can see the eventualities we're not quite sure which timeline will manifest to get to the culmination point where the dark cabal is taken down and we move into this new earth there are many ways to move towards that it might be that many of us have to leave our homes that's quite drastic and probably won't occur but 
it's potentially in the timelines or it might be there for some of us or we might have to leave a website or leave a connection or no longer be connected to this person or this group and we have to follow that voice so i think it was wonderful that you you explained to us what happened when you were in paris because if you hadn't listened and it's so easy not to listen we've all done it i don't know about you but i've ignored that voice oh, yeah. so many times and then thought why didn't i listen to you had you listened you would have been in paris and you wouldn't have been able to get home yeah had i listened i probably would not be on this call with all of you ladies and i would not be sharing what I'm sharing because what was happening for me was I was receiving these very strong activations and downloads and I could not handle receiving those energy downloads and activations. My physical body was going into what looked like paralysis, anxiety, panic attacks, which I had never had my whole life. And I had been through extreme um, abuse and trauma and my whole life has been pretty, pretty wild. So for me to know that whatever this was had that much power over me, I essentially surrendered and looked up, you know, from source I am and said, SOS, I can't handle this. What is happening? And that's when it was like the voice, this booming voice just came in and said, leave or you will be trapped. And I think that that's so important right now that we all also get really vulnerable and honest with I can handle this I can't handle this yeah. and ultimately what it was was it was my higher self coming in and saying this situation is not a match to who you are and your sovereignty and I'm telling you from your future self that is already here right now that you need to leave this place or what you're headed for is going to be an extremely different timeline and some people have chosen that, but you have chosen something else. So I just, I just get chills when I talk about this because I've seen that so many of us are going to be, in a way, saved by our future higher selves directing us through this every step of the way. And when I lately have been connecting with the Pleiadians in this manner, I had this extreme realization now in the physical body of realizing I was talking to my future self that had come back in this moment to remind me and direct me. And as long as I continue to listen to that voice, that will guide me to exactly that timeline that we're all on together. So that's, um, that's really where, where I am with this right now is, okay, I see all of this going on, but in a way to me, this is all an illusion is a choice. I have a moment to moment choice right now to either let these frequencies change my focus or my focus off of the timeline that I've chosen or not. And also, I've been totally breaking down and totally crying and totally processing all of my um, very human and ancestral, just all this stuff and lifetimes and karma and also having new soulmates suddenly appear to remember things we went through together to activate these pieces and all of this is so important too it's not about oh i'm all love and light and i'm denying all of this no because we can't actually ground these high frequencies into the body into the earth connecting to the new earth crystalline core unless we are also doing our own inner work so that we can receive this in the body because it's not anymore about vibrating out of the body. It's about the body. So that's been a huge reminder for me too. You know what, you ladies, yesterday I was thinking about grief ceremonies and how, you know, grieving, the ancients did it, or many cultures now even still do it, of its grieving together because like you were saying magenta we are having to unplug and let go of so much whether it's an emotional trauma or a loss of a a, a feeling of a loss of a loved one or of our identity or just seeing what looks to be happening on the surface of everything and it's just like pff, those those times of those tears um it's, it's purifying it's healing but i also feel like there's something about collective grief that kind of gives permission 
I don't know, it's just a powerful thing. Like crying on our own is crying on our own. And I like I, the other day I was, I had cried all day. I was super sad and I reached out to Chrissy and it was just that connection to know I'm not on my own and we're not on our own. And to share that we are not on our own through all of it, through thick and thin and on that grief level. And I don't know, it's just something I was really thinking about yesterday. And it'd be amazing to kind of do something like that regularly. I agree. Because if we look at uh, even regardless of coronavirus being a bioweapon or connected to 5G rollout, it is an attack on our lungs, which hold grief. So on a collective level, processing all the darkness coming to the surface, uh, human trafficking, pedophilia, I mean, things that are horrifying just to know even exists in somebody who might be sitting in a jail cell, let alone uh, Mm -hmm. our leaders of, of political worlds, religions, things that people have invested all their energy into that have raised their children under those guidelines and under their direction, all of a sudden it's like, because Saturn conjunct Pluto and this Pluto element that takes us into the under underworlds and helps us to face that dark night of the soul, humans don't really know how to do that because we haven't been permission, uh, given permission to initiate. We're handed drugs, we're told we're depressed and, and oh, stop being so sensitive, don't cry. And, and it's almost like there's a huge crisis in the lungs and throat so people can just say, hey, this is traumatic. This is unbelievable mm-hmm. because of what will somebody else say? And, and what if I shatter their reality? Or what if all this is conspiracy? So regardless of where this weapon co- or this virus or whatever comes from, this collective grief is the growth period we're in to face so that we can cry and heal and release all the stress, all the harsh realities and, and move through this initiation and begin to feel again. Because all these compromised beings that need to abduct lost their emotionality, lost their reproductive capacity because they shunned the feeling world. And so to be reminded to feel again, I think it's going to help us strengthen the lungs, strengthen the throat, and also build you know, stronger bonds because we need each other. We can't do this alone. And okay. I cried before this interview. I'm like, oh my God. And I, I cry all the time. It, that was my old profession I used to it's just like okay gotta, you know instead of going out for a walk it's like, I'm gonna cry for two hours and then I can get on with my day <laughs> and that that's one of the one of the things that is so funny when you process now and you know integrating emotions like I mentioned but I'm so glad everybody else had cry moments too it wasn't just me but it's funny that you're crying and I, I'm aware of my ego my small self having a hissy fit but I'm also aware at the higher level that, oh, you're in process. Look at you having a hissy fit. You know, it's kind of bizarre. Yeah. But I want to circle back to what Nina said about the, about um, to all, everybody that's listening. It is so important to foster a connection and a relationship with your higher self. What, whether you call it a spirit guide or your guardian angel or whatever, because that is what is going to keep us safe in no matter how strong the storm is. Uh, to, to, to guide us through this and humanity is waking up through all of this that's being revealed right like this COVID thing is like the first trigger I did my uh, my first corporate workshop yesterday and um, even on the on the call it's like doesn't anybody wonder why like we've got this World Health Organization we've got all these global scientists these brilliant minds and not one of them have talked about any natural remedy to boost the immune system and the four months of the television, like that's got to, you have to be like that. People are waking up to that going, what the hell? What, what's mm-hmm. that? You know, you, you're in charge of pandemics and globally, well, you fail. So you're fired. We're firing you. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what about Chinese medicine, all the herbs? Uh, there's multiple things that can even deal with the radiation. It's like, the shot is definitely to link us to a 5G thing and to take this new world order agenda to the next level and it's not gonna work. We're too powerful, too many people have woken up and the wave is just gonna continue to grow. Didn't even Donald Trump say yesterday, he was talking about MMS, like, it, you know, uh, is it Magic Mineral Solution, Jim Humbles? He was talking about taking that. And then it got con- twisted in the media that he was talking about- right, Getting the light the therapy, right? right? It was like, yeah, they, they completely twisted it. Say so Donald Trump says we should inject disinfectant. It was like, that wasn't what he was talking about. <laughs> Apparently, I, you know, that was, that was the gist of what I got from it anyway. But the thing is, it's already in vaccines that they give children, these disinfectants, formaldehyde, and all these horrific things. And then they're giving him a hard time? And yeah. anti-vaxxers, like they're a conspiracy theorist? 
No, but MMS is like, it, it is amazing. It does clean out toxins out of the body. It's super powerful. Um, it's, you know, it's, I don't know if you've ever, you're nodding, nodding, right? You've come across it. It's super powerful. Yes, I have a lot. Yep. So, yeah. I find it so funny with Trump. He's unknowingly intuitive, that man. It's so funny. He doesn't know why he suddenly is, wants to say something and it comes out all funny and goofy. But a lot of the time it's like, hey, you're actually onto it, you know? And they well, know his it. Uncle, wasn't his uncle an MIT professor in science? And, and he's like super advanced in that field. And I think I watched an interview where Trump said that he's just really in, interested in this stuff. Right? But yeah, the media does. There's a major Tesla connection there too. And so yeah. generators instead of ventilators and all these little slips like you're saying then it'll just say shut up your fake news i don't talk to you it's just like right yeah. and all these bat people bashing him i'm like anyway yeah i did i did i did share with you didn't i about trump appearing to me in a dream once as an enlightened master in white gowns and i said to him huh trump and he goes yeah <laughs> and um and i said but that 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 doesn't make sense. He says, I know, I know. I'm just playing the fool in life, but that's the but, way I need to do it in order to, you know, get my agenda, you know, bring in the golden age kind of thing, which was really interesting. Uh, and then a week later, I got Obama in the dream and, um, and he was asking me to stop making the films because his plan was already gonna, you know, it was futile what I was trying to do because the, you know, the new world order was already in a, in a, in a, in a far advanced stage. So it was very interesting that the goodie presented himself as a baddie and vice versa. Mm -hmm. But in alignment with correct energies, your dreams were. And it's interesting because I've had a lot of people write to me with very similar dreams about Trump. People who couldn't make up their own mind, didn't know whether Trump was good or not. And then they've had dreams that have answered those questions for them. Mm -hmm. I, had a, I had a dream a couple of years ago, two, I think two or three summers ago, and he made a new peace treaty with the galactics. That was the dream that he made a new peace treaty at the higher levels. You had a dream too, Magenta, didn't you, of him moving papers and- Yes, yes I did. Uh, yes, I had a dream of him sitting there outdoors at a table and he was actually creating a treaty with many world leaders. Um, I had a friend contact me only last week um, and that person had a Trump dream. This was one of the individuals that wasn't sure whether Trump was good or not, was open to the fact that Trump was working for the light and then had a dream that showed, that showed him exactly who Trump was, just like Chrissy. So this is about, this is the higher self. This is the intuitive aspect. Everything we want to know will come to us when we're mm. in alignment and when we've let go of any resistance. There are so many people that, that have just decided that they hate Trump and they put themselves into such a resistance place that they're not able to open that energy and relax with that energy and then move into the alignment and see truth. I, I had a lot of people when I first started talking about Trump, because obviously I saw this when I first looked at his photograph, I saw straight away what he was and what his role was. And so I made videos about it. And I had so many people write to me privately, um, absolutely attacking me and saying I was ridiculous and wasn't really psychic and was a fake and all this stuff. And then these same people wrote to me like a year later, I mean, not all of them, but <laughs> many of them to say, I did go away and I was really angry and I decided not to listen to your messages anymore. I decided I never want to listen to Magenta again because she's a fake. But then I started to listen to your messages and then slowly over this period of time and seeing the things that Trump has done and looking behind the scenes and understanding the big picture, people have come back to me and, uh, and apologized and said, I'm really sorry. And you have opened my eyes and you were right. So I think people really do need to understand what is going on because if you can't understand what Trump's role is in this, you won't understand the plan. You won't mm. understand why things are happening the way that they are. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we don't understand is because we're already being taught from a young age in schools to listen with our ears. 
We're not being taught to listen with the feeling. I'm really lucky that I kept that and that I can, you know, and, and, and by the sounds of it, you too, you can listen with your, with your heart and then make your judgment. But so many people around me, they're, they're, they've gone too much in the direction of int intellect and it just doesn't do us any favors when it's not in coherence. And that's part of the divide and conquer too, because without integration of the heart, we aren't in our intuition. And, and I had dreams too and, and, and felt this, energy wash over me of just who this person really is. And I was like, whoa, and I'm careful what I share. But the thing is, we also have to remember that anybody that is that hateful of somebody that's up against what he's up against in our times, to think that anybody's a fake for even just saying anything positive, that person really needs to look at themselves because we can make each other better people. We can support something that we might not even like and feed it good energy and see the good and enhance that good to help open the box for us to jump out of. Because we've all been affected by so societal conditioning and just the way that we are raised, how can anybody hate somebody so much to not give them an opportunity to become the best of themselves? So you might not agree with Trump people, but what is the point in putting so much toxic energy when we're trying to create a global shift? That is absolutely, you know, standing in the way when we can really, if we don't really like him, hold space for the best of him to emerge. And if we do support him, you know, then, Ask yourself, why are they supporting him? It's not because of Republican parties. It's because things like human trafficking are going down. Crimes against humanity are becoming busted. Things are coming to the surface that are helping to see, you know, the, these pedophilia rings and the most horrific stuff under his administration. Can we at least appreciate that this administration has created more change than, than, than most in, in, in so long? And so, yeah. Thanks for letting me just have that vent, ma. Yeah, no, and thanks for putting it so eloquently and so, and it's such truth. It completely resonates with me. Yeah, I love that. It's like, it's not a Trump issue. It's a them issue. If you're so full of hate, like, you know, my mom always said, when you point the finger, three point back at you. And it's like, why would you put so much hate on another human being? Mm -hmm. And to be fair, like, I don't watch anything to do with Trump, but when he first came out and all these people were hating on him, I'm like, what a soul. What kind of soul is this that he's incarnated into this body to get that much hate and look how strong he is. What an amazing soul he is. So like whatever you think of him, he's doing something extraordinary. Who else could stand there with that yeah. much media attention, that much hatred on them and stand strong and stay true to his own convictions. Like what a being, like whatever you think of him. I think he's amazing. And then yeah. to turn a blind eye to victims that are talking about, you know, Obviously, we know, we know the feminine needs to come in, but when people are so blinded just because Hillary Clinton's in a female body that they can't see so much proof that's attached to it, and then giving Trump a hard time over the smallest things where we're turning a blind eye to pedophilia, those same people are not even giving that part the time of day. They're too busy, like saying he's going to shoot us up with chemicals and, and using any little thing he says to blow it out of proportion. It's like, I mean, this is obviously a hugely scary thing for people to begin to think for themselves, but. You know, they're, you know what I love about light workers? They, they don't have the animosity or the, the opposition in return to those that are asleep. We're holding love and compassion and forgiveness. And we're doing the best we can. Whereas those that are asleep are out there, you know, waging war on, on those that are well-intentioned. But, you know, we don't stoop to that level. We don't create assassination plans to go after some of these dark people, you know, and um, yeah. Yeah. And it, incarnating in a female body does not make you embody the divine feminine mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you're embodying the divine feminine and looking at hillary clinton does she embody the divine feminine i mean <laughs> i think the answer to that is obvious no. <laughs> so yeah it's uh the, the whole the whole trump thing is caught i mean i've been attacked it's almost it, 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 it's it's you don't really want to come out as a Trump supporter because you get more attack on that than anything else that you might, you know, I'm an alien, I'm an ET in the human body. I probably have less <laughs> attack me than if I said I was a Trump supporter because I like even my own father-in-law, when I, when he heard that, he's like, Oh, you're one of those mm -hmm. hatred. Like he can't stand me the contempt. And it's, it's, it's kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. That it's starting to affect you less, that you're more comfortable. Oh, I, yeah, I'm, I, kind of, I kind of feel, even after my little crying fit last weekend, I feel very strong and powerful. And I, it's, I, don't, care if you, I don't care if you don't like me anymore. I don't care. I'm telling the truth. I, uh, I don't care. 
Yeah. The truth I becomes agree. more powerful than the fear of being judged and the fear of being thrown out of your tribe. And because we also see the tribe of the awake ones is growing so fast now, it's almost going towards, hey, we're almost going to be a majority. And that will be the point where it will become easier on us because the load is divided then, you know, the collective load is then divided. And you guys, and you know, you're in, this is international, this group right here, you know, speaking about American government. Sorry, go ahead, Magenta. So people need to just say, wow, you're not even in the United States. And, yeah. and you can see this from the higher perspective. I mean, that's such a good omen for people to follow. Sorry, but I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, I, I've had people um, read my statuses on social media about Trump and they'll comment and say, I'd love to share this but I dare not share it because I'm going to get so attacked. And I'm thinking, okay, fair enough. But there has to come a point when you stand up and you speak the truth and you don't worry about those attacks because at the, at the end of the day, these are social media attacks. It is different when you're in person with a family member or something, but on social media, this is their comment. And yes, if you're sensitive, you will feel the energy of that attack. Of course you will, but there are ways to shield yourself from that and as I was saying in our interview yesterday Laura write the status don't reply to any of the comments even if there are there are a thousand of them don't tempt be tempted to go and reply and get it caught into a debate mm -hmm. say your words place the status and then go off and do something else and then do another status read them an hour later you don't have to reply I've got so many friends who can't do this They'll write a status and then somebody will, you know, defend them, attack them, um, catch them in a debate and they're straight in there. And then they spend four hours having an argument and then they say to me, I'm so drained. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, of course you are. <laughs> I, I just say, I, I just say, bless you. Thank you for the communication. Because you can't, can't beat you up if you're, you're being kind and thank you and bless you. Yep. I just uh, say. What's your address? I'm there in five minutes with my collection. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but the thing is, our heart, it, when it's for the right reasons, there, there needs to be no combat or going out of your way to try and prove something. Because exactly. the, the deeper intention is that it's about protecting the children, ending the crimes against humanity, uh, disclosure, you know, um, introducing people to just greater medicine, greater health care. Um, and so, yeah, what if he can't deliver all that? Doesn't matter. He doesn't deserve hatred because we're leaders too. We all need to rise up together. We all play a different role. And, and, and so I think people expect it to be a political battle, that they're still in that mindset of um, like, like it being about a party. And, uh, and they don't seem to understand. That's why they call them like right-wing conspiracy theorists. And all these labels, it's like, what about no labels? What about justice, divine justice? And, and, and seeing the, the human potential rise and us all working together in unity consciousness and maybe changing the whole system of government and politics from that point forward. It seems like the doorway is finally open. And yes, if he can take, if he can take all the, the crap for the role he plays, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to take crap for the truth because, you know, and if I stand to be corrected, I, I'm fine with that. I don't, I don't need to prove anything. I'm, I'm, I'm learning just like everybody else, but there's some things that we cannot back away from and we know this, and this is what we all have in common. Mm -hmm. Actually, actually yeah. this week on, I actually did this publicly on my LinkedIn page and I felt kind of bold, I did be kind of ballsy about it. I had, a, I had a VP of sales once tell me I should dim my light. And I had another CEO tell me, you're too earthy. And on, on that, I said, I, I actually made the claim. I said, I am an ambassador of the light and of the truth. And for those who told me to dim my light, I will not. And for those who told me I'm too earthy, thank God I am. Yeah. I, I was kind of a little bit like, oh, I feel kind of, I feel kind of like. Bam. That's a high, high compliment. You're too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can we um, you know, you, you talk about the light and, and I've recently been really talking about the dark and how people think the dark is not good. You know, yeah. when it's actually, um, we, I'm not sort of informing you about this. I'm sure you, you, you know this yourself, but I've really been, you know, trying to speak about the balance between the light and the dark and that, you know, the, the place where creation starts in a gestation place in this darkness and that humanity is starting to hopefully start to redefine what darkness means 
and that the evil on this planet doesn't fit in that bracket of darkness, but it is, it, it's in the bracket of sickness, you know, disconnection. You know, speaking of evil, what is evil? For me, it is uh, ignorance, the not knowing, the not understanding the consequence of my action. Yeah, if, if, I, if people eat their food and uh, their meat and I take them to a, 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 a slaughterhouse where they're being slaughtered in a very unpleasant way, you know, then suddenly it hits them. Okay, this is a cause and, 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 and there's an effect attached to that. The fact that they don't know that, that is to me the sickness of humanity. Yeah, and um, humanity only has, so in my knowing and what I've been taught, there's, it, humanity suffering can be reduced just to one single idea. And that is the belief in separation, that we are separate from our creator. Mm -hmm. And that's how fear was born. Of course, every, everything we fear, the whole purpose of fear is to create more fear. <clears throat> Yeah, um, I would love to speak to that. A, a huge lesson for me recently has been, you know, if you are going beyond duality and seeing all of this beyond duality, um, there is, yes, there is this perceived battle within the earth duality complex that we're in right now. But if you can observe it beyond duality, then essentially all of these players that are playing roles because we all are right now are are a great gift even the ones that are playing the evil role because there is tremendous light in the darkness if you know how to see it that way and so what i've been kind of how i've been processing that is well wherever this person that is playing this evil role is throwing me out of my own soul level integrity which is personal sovereignty galactic sovereignty thank you for coming in and being a great teacher for me to show me where i need to do my inner work and what's been really interesting for me to see is that in a lot of the spiritual communities in which people have sort of been talking this way for a long time i've been a bit surprised to see that there's a ton of spiritual bypassing going on Mm -hmm. And it's actually been coming from people that I had really considered to be strong leaders in these communities. And I just honestly need to speak about this because I feel like there's also this great revealing happening right now, which I'm so grateful for. And all the masks are coming off. And so if you've been hiding behind a mask of spirituality, that mask is coming off and the true colors of souls are being revealed right now to each other. And within that, we're communicating and seeing the world and each other on a new level. So you really, it's like we can't BS anymore, which is amazing. And, and that is happening because we all really need to face the truth in ourselves and also collectively. Um, so that's just the piece that I, I wanted to share around that. Uh that was amazing. Thank you for sharing that. It just brought, brought just something, you know, up for me that, that, that I try and articulate as best as I can. I mean, when we're integrating polarity, only something genuine can take place because there's constant conception. The programmings want us to be polarized. And so the ego mask will hide behind that choice to create division without realizing it because it wants followers. It wants to be right. It needs people to believe in them. And, and so, and, and the mask might appear, you know, kind and benevolent, but if it doesn't integrate polarity, if it doesn't understand that light and dark is something we hold within us, and it's something that is supposed to work together like the masculine and feminine, um, you know, darkness is the womb and, and, and the light is the higher seeds of consciousness that get birthed into that soil and into that womb to produce life. And we're constantly creating. But if, if, if we're wearing a mask, um, we, we, I mean, and, and we're seeing it all come to a head, it, it's like the division gets even worse. And, uh, and, and so if we can hold space and forgive that as well as we're, you know, working on greater forgiveness of, of it all, you know, we can realize that this is, this is what it's going to take for us to rehabilitate and begin to walk the true path. If we keep throwing people under the bus because they got it wrong, then we're not really doing it. 
So even if people were mistaken in that way, we have to, you know, see the child become a mature spiritual being and, and, and we have to be a guardian to that process of transformation or else we'll just keep looping in this mm-hmm. duality because it, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be integrated of us because we know mm-hmm. how the shadow goes. It might work its way out differently than what some of these people are holding in the public arena, but mm-hmm. you know, and that's why the power of the feminine is so important because we have that and men do too, the, the ability to nurture a child, our own inner child, to recognize that nurturing is how we thrive. Forgiveness, compassion, and giving a hug instead of the punishing patriarchy and how it's created so much victim consciousness and fear. Mm-hmm. Oh, you nailed that. You mm-hmm. nailed that. <laughs> it's like that separation paradigm. It's like the good guy, bad guy. It just can't exist. It doesn't really exist, but it just, as long as we, so we keep relating to somebody being a good guy or a bad guy, it's still in separation, right? And it's just like the complete ending of the good guy, bad guy paradigm. And just like you say, coming back to the inner child, just coming back to life itself, which mm-hmm. is all of it. And it doesn't separate. Breath doesn't only go to people that are good and withhold from people that are bad. It doesn't choose. It's that simple oh, surrender, the simple innocence that life is and, and that beautiful creation. Lord, yeah, Lord. What we've uh, done as a collective is we've, we've, we've made the, the sinner the sin, the, the action that was taken potentially in their ignorance or, 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 or based on whatever information they had available at the time, we've made them the sin itself, mm-hmm. right? Which is, which is uh, a, a distortion or wrong, wrong-mindedness. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned relationships and I've been kind of wanting to come back to that point. You said something about that, um, that kind of energy separating, you know, partnerships coming, divine partnerships coming together. Can you talk more about that? Because we're talking about, okay, us as single sovereign human beings, but what about us in relationship and, you know, the, the unity of masculine and feminine? How can you speak to that? You were, you hinted at it earlier. Who are you talking to? You, Laura. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, what's crazy is the inner work that's required to get to the real alchemical marriage part of it, the real union, the real ability to recognize the fullness of each other and not hold each other to these stereotypes, these programmings and these behavior patterns that avoid the wound and act out in weird personality ways to hide that wound to refuse, you know, to, to avoid vulnerability. There's special souls that come together with these kind of agreements. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but, uh, this is how we deprogram the human race because we're resetting the template of, of, you know, what, 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 what we're really made of the, the Christ Sophia, whatever you want to call it. Um, and how that relates to the earth grids, the multidimensional cosmos and our ability to upgrade our DNA again. And so it's the most ultimate work and the most targeted thing. And that's why we see in movies and media and religions, all this sort of recreation of what these roles should be that don't make us healthy. Don't cause us soul appeasement. Don't bring us joy or happiness. Don't create a healthy family unit because it's all been taught. And so all the, 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 the outer is, is beginning to fall and we're beginning to speak from what's truly within. And then if we can do that in partnership and, 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 and put those programmings to the side, it's the most ultimate you know, transformation available. And that's what is, is incredibly important to do that within ourselves and, and to make sure before we get heavily invested in a person that they're really on board with that because we're all wounded, but can we admit to it? Can we work through it? Can we, can we look at triggers and, and grow together from them instead of have it create separation? And just like physical bodies with symptoms, every adversity gives us an opportunity to get closer to each other. But we've been taught for it to create more war, more separation, more divide. And, and yes, yeah, so we're talking about it on all these multidimensional levels. And it's awesome to bring it back to just that inner union. And then that circulation of the body, you know, switches on the dormant energy centers. It allows the ether to come and purify the DNA and the chakra centers helps us to anchor and ground and then boom, we're out of the tree of knowledge and we're back to the tree of life template and our DNA is, is functioning and, 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 and it's, it's firing on all levels. And then we begin to see the galactic heritage in the larger family. And, um, and then, yeah, it's like, talk about guardianship, you know, coming in and, and we all have a strong link to it, but we're becoming it. And that's the beautiful part. But we have to remember the love story. 
and, and remember those fairy tales that true love was everything going through the dark battles with the villain or going into the underworlds, having separation, but never giving up because mm -hmm. love is something we should never be so traumatized to avoid because we're afraid of being hurt again. We just need to be more tuned in and less putting the rose colored glasses on or giving our power away or feeling too small or just wanting validation and acceptance. Um, we we got to drop all of that and, uh, and be willing to, you know, put that out there. And, and, and it's amazing that we are all doing that together. It's like, I hope we do this again. Mm -hmm. I love you said that. I, I, sorry, I just wanted to say when you, when you said about this, the, the, the thing of it being sabotage, those divine unions being sabotage, those relationships, I think that's so helpful and validating for people to hear because we often like turn it on ourselves and think it's a me problem and I did it and I'm not good enough and I failed and I fucked up and whatever. But for you to name it that way, I think is really, really helpful for people. I'm really, really grateful that you, you spoke about that. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Dark technologies are, you know, in the way they uh, affected the ley lines, all the masculine and feminine, the electromagnetic, you know, forces flowing, all that has been unplugged, put in reversal code. So we're born into this distortion yeah. And we have to just like hold hands and say, whoa, you know, we're really overcoming something huge together instead of the blame and shame, because there's so much more that's trying to, you know, make it difficult um, that if we don't have awareness of it can, it can break more hearts than it needs to. And then, and we, and on that note, right, we have to remember that our tech, God's tech is so much more superior than any dark tech, especially when we come together, right? Mm-hmm. Totally. And as you I've just said, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I've been getting the words round table, round table, round table for a long time. And I tried to set one up last year and it was um, quite interesting. But um, uh, when you came up with, with the idea of us coming together, I was like, yes, that is what is required right now. It was a complete, we need to not just do this once, but it's very, very potent and powerful to do this. Well, the round table, when you look at the Knights of the Round Table, sitting in the round table, putting their swords in, so you have sovereignty and unity with the circle of the round table. There's no leader. Everyone is equal. And those swords that cross the table from the Knights, looking at the Camelot stories, then that's the matrix. So that's the... Um, that's the vertical pillar of light, which is the Excalibur, the sword, the vertical axis, which is the above and the below, the dark, the light, the positive darkness, the positive light, as, as you were saying earlier about darkness being positive, and the horizontal and the diagonal. And this is the sort of model that the nine have shown me is this, this matrix, a simplified way of being able to understand the direction of the toroidal field that is our energetic system in the body and in the planet and in the galaxy. So round table is actually a code, a fire letter known within the DNA Round Table, Excalibur, Merlin, the Dragon, Camelot, all of those are codes. Every starseed, every awakened individual will be connected to that story because that is um, global and planetary and galactic metaphor. It's a, a presentation of ancient language. So Round Table, Round Table is multi-layered in, um, in its presentation. It's a fire letter, it's a code. It activates the DNA. That is what takes the DNA from the carbon-based structure into the, the, the beautiful crystalline uh, silicon-based structure. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what the fire letters are. They're codes to activate. So when you come together and you communicate like this, you're actually creating an amplification of energy. One individual can amplify their energy on their own, but when people come together in a round table, they amplify the energy much, much, much stronger. And that's what's happening across the planet. We're not all sitting on a literal round table on, on Zoom, but we are. We are creating a huge, huge round table right across the planet telepathically. It's a telepathic, psychic, spiritual union. And that's what's raising the vibration of this planet. And that is what is going to create the new earth, change everything in the third dimension, bring all of the uh, technologies forward that will help us with healing, bring forward all the ancient medicines and the herbs and take down the control structure and free everyone from this 
years and years and years of slavery and all of these crimes <laughs> against humanity. The round table is so meaningful on so many levels. And also in the physical mm -hmm. people that are living in a town to, to look each other up and do come together. Hey, I'm not encouraging social distancing here. Hey, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> you make that effort to physically come together um, and, and, and form these groups together because the energy of that will um, emanate out to yeah. other circles. Mm. Social distancing. I, I, heard, uh, I heard, well, uh, two things I want to share. So, Back to Nina, you were talking about the Pleiadians. I heard many, many years ago that one person connected to source is more powerful than a million people in fear. I wanted to share that, which is so true. And then the second one, like the image that they give me is on my peripheral on this side is a complete, like a demolition happening. Like a building is collapsing with all of the dust. But over here, there's this incredible renaissance of like new poetry and literature and art and this incredible innovation and, and breakthroughs. And, and, I, and I love that image. It's almost like you kind of, you almost deny this a little bit, but with compassion and respect. And that was a fun journey. That was fun to play that work for a while. But over here, this is where I really want to put my creative focus and my, my heart-centered energy on. Because really, there's just me and you here, right? For all the people that are listening, there's only human beings here. So if it's just you and me, why do I keep making shitty products that end up toxic in a, in a, in a landfill and that rip you off with money if you're, if you're the only other person on the planet with me? Like, it's insane. Why would I make you something that's, that doesn't last and rip you off? You know, like, and I think, I think, I think people are beginning to see that. It's a huge <laughs> mind control thing. What's that, Chrissy? It's just been a huge long-term mind control thing that has been playing. And, and as these shells fall off, I think part of what is coming up, the grief that we're feeling is the grief of how could I have not seen this? How could I have just, how, how did I get caught up in that? Why didn't I see that? You know, there's also a little bit that I see for a lot of people. I've actually had people say that to me. I've actually had people say to me, oh my goodness, I've been so thick all these years. I've been so blind. And I'll reply, no, you haven't. It just hadn't come to you yet. But now it has. And it doesn't matter when it comes to you, when you find the truth. When you do find the truth, then it's your time to step forward. But I was going to say about your other comment, you mentioned a joke about social distancing. And I was going to say, social distancing is creating the telepathy. The more they separate us, the yeah. stronger we reach out with that signal. Everything they do is backfiring. They are creating the very thing they're trying to prevent, which is the great awakening, the awareness of everyone on the planet, knowing what they're doing and their downfall. They're desperately trying to stop it. And by doing that, they're creating it. Yeah, the purpose of fear is to recreate more fear. So their biggest fear is the awakening and they're actually making it happen. Yep. They Thank you, God bless you. <laughs> I know, I, I said that to those that were trying to drag me off planet. It's like, you have no idea, you know, and the ones, wh whoever was trying to silence me, you're, you're, you're actually helping me. I knew that within myself, even if I felt like I couldn't do anything, I'm like, the, 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 it, something's increasing. And then it, it's eventually gonna bust through the gateway, right? So the momentum on the earth is building because the gateways are gonna be bust through because this is the time period on earth where the natural stargates open anyway. Mm -hmm. But there's a congestion, which is, you know, we see the lungs issue again, regardless of where it came from. The physical symptoms is the congestion of not having the greater circulation with the ether. And so the dam's about to burst, but it's not, um, it's not that the dark controllers are gonna, like overtake it, the dam's going to burst where the gateways open and, yeah. and, and people will feel that grace and that healing. And, and those that aren't able to stay in physical form, it's okay. We can't fear death. We can't hold on to those loved ones. We have to realize when, when people transition and our loved ones transition, it's like, you know, it's, it's taking a different position on the soccer field. Like, okay, now we're going to outfield, <laughs> like way outfield, but we're still part of this communication and, and and we need to trust that what we can't see is 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 filled with essence and vibration and connection what mm -hmm. we can see is often deceiving so if we can you know see from the inside out and create from the inside out rather than the outside in 
everything is so much more reassuring than we can imagine. The tears in a lot of ways is a happy reunion, even mm -hmm. though there's pain mixed in because we've all missed something huge and we, and, and we feel threatened. I mean, it's to me, a lot of the tears that come up for me is happy reunion. Like here we are, finally, we can all relate on this level. People are really ready for that. Yeah. It was yeah. called the last consensual ceremonial death when 10 years ago I had my vision. You know, the people dying, they were consenting to this mm. on a soul level. Yeah, yeah that's, that's very true. Um, it is definitely this very strong time of transition and also, I feel, resurrection. And Absolutely. part of that divine feminine path is also stepping into that warrior role which is choosing your battles very wisely and also understanding that when you are connected to that divine light you are superhuman and every attack that I have received my entire life and I have been attacked from the time I was a little baby I was one of those that was targeted only made me stronger and I reached a point in the past two years when I really realized that wow every time you try to kill me you actually bring me back stronger and it in this in this resurrection you get to a point where you become fearless and you yeah. really become fearless because you realize that there has been something that is for me that is source that is God I am present that has had their hand on my life the entire time and still does for the mission that I'm on. And do you know, I'm speaking this to everyone. It's not just myself. I see this in so many of us. It's just when you are, your eyes open and you see it, you realize, wow, that is the power of love. And, and that is what I can have faith in. And no matter what happens, that is what I'm going to trust. So I really see us in this incredible global resurrection where we are constantly daily moment to moment being resurrected um and i also just wanted to speak to this part that, about paula you were talking about this renaissance of artists um i completely resonate with that and i'm so excited because i've seen this vision where at some point when we get to this point on the timeline there are going to be a lot of people that are needing help. They already do. A lot of people already need help right now with accepting this time of transition, this time of awakening. And I see this huge renaissance opening up of a global renaissance of artists and musicians and um, poets and actors all anchored in that love and light of truth and I've actually seen that a lot of the churches will be taken over in this manner where you have healers and light workers everywhere, just in droves, assisting whoever needs that assistance. And that's why we all have this desire to be doing that on a global scale and to be united together doing this. So I am very excited for that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. I'm very excited. Nina, I was going to say what you just said is absolutely amazing. When you're talking about the resurrection and your story of being through abusive situations and you thought to yourself, each time you kill me, I come back even stronger. That's just so powerful and so very intrinsic within deep spiritual understanding. And if you look at the Star Wars film, you know, in that very first Star Wars film that they did where Obi-Wan Kenobi, or maybe it was the second one, where he holds his lightsaber and he says to Darth Vader, if you strike me down, I will rise up even stronger. And Darth Vader, and then he allows him to strike him. He puts his saber sort of straight and he allows Darth Vader to strike him. And then, you know, as an audience watching that film, we're thinking, oh no, Obi-Wan has gone. And yet the whole series of Star Wars, Obi-Wan's energy was always there. And that that's a deep spiritual presentation and everything that Nina just said, the resurrection and that, that power and that coming together, it's not just Star Wars, it's been presented all over. And that's that's what's happening. And the vision that you have of the artists and the 
singers and the dancers and the actors and the poets and this amazing light and having all light workers within that structure and the creativity that's coming absolutely i also see that vision very strongly within what is being called the new earth the fifth dimensional presentation on this planet oh my goodness i mean when you look forward the beauty and the harmony and the intelligence and the wisdom simply because we'll be free we'll be free to go forward without hijacking that dark matrix is no longer holding us back we will finally be free and that is what we're creating now and it mm -hmm. is beautiful and we have got to keep our eyes on that prize if you know what i mean we have to keep focusing on that amazing outcome and knowing that it's occurred living as though it's already happened which is really difficult when the third dimension looks like it's a new world order takeover to find the place within us where we know this is the fifth dimension. This is the new earth. It's here now. The unity is here now because it is here now. But that's what's going to create it. Us coming together like this and sharing is creating that vision. Yeah, uh, if I can just add, Nina, you, you were mentioning about the mask coming off. Of course, we're witnessing that and what's been hidden behind is what's being revealed, <clears throat> what was in the shadow. And then at, at, at the same time, that's when those that have agreed to embody the resurrection actually happens, right? The higher step steps in fully to the physical body and is fully expressed in its true nature. At least that's what's being talked about with the work that I'm doing with the guides. And that part I'm like so excited and I have no clue what it's going to look like. One of my favorite mantras is, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going. I don't know what I'll become, but I am, right? Like. I have no clue what this is going to look like. <laughs> quite the uh, quite the adventure. May I share with that with what you said, Nina? I completely relate to you. When you're speaking, my heart's just filling up with so much love for you right now. I just it's wonderful. Oh. And uh, when I was um when I was in my mother's womb, like I had proper sixties, seventies hippie parents, and they were really on a world peace mission. They were really amazing. They come from Belfast, where all the troubles were happening, and they came to London, and it was all about you know the the peace mission of the late sixties and seventies. And my mum was pregnant with me, and she was in a, a car accident, and the, I was pronounced dead by two hospitals, and apparently was not alive for a two month period in the womb. And my mum just completely didn't believe that I was dead. She was just in the light. She was in, she was in trust really of herself. And so uh, two months later, almost two months later, my heartbeat came back, my pulse came back and I was in the womb for 11 months. Mm -hmm. And then I was just born normally, really, really hairy and wrinkly, like I'd been in the bath for too long, but I was really, you know, I was healthy. And um, linking back to what you were sharing, my experience is that life is a choice. To, to be born on this earth is a choice. We made that choice in our soul. We made it consciously. It's a choice every day to live. Mm. And the, also what we call death is also a choice. Mm -hmm. And we might not all remember the choice that we make and we might not be conscious of our day-to-day, moment-to-moment choice, but we made that choice. And to understand that those people that seem like they're not making it, you know, because there's, I'm also hearing in, in some communities that them and us thing of those of us that make it and those of us that don't those that get left behind um and i know this was a a, a point of choice back in about 2012 people were feeling a similar point of choice that we're feeling now it's like am i going to go with the love and that new earth that we, we're talking about or am i you know going to stay here with the you know Am I going to make the dimensional shift, so to speak, you know, mm -hmm. and that fear of letting go and losing loved ones with that, that sense of people are going to die. You know, there's been lots of prophecies about mass death. And like you were talking about the ceremonial consensus for death or, or what looks like death. But I feel like from my understanding, it's a done game. It's, it's already played out. It's already done. We already chose in our soul. And yes, we can still upgrade our choices. There's always an opportunity to come back in and upgrade our choices and transform our choices in every single moment. But that nobody goes or gets left behind. That isn't a thing anyway. Because we're all in the same, like we're all in the same ecosystem of the universe. We're all, you know, birth, life and death constantly. But it is a choice 
And if even if we can just remember that, you know, to choose to breathe right now, choose to stay in our body, choose, am I going to be in fear or am I going to be in love? Do I want to live? Do I want to perish underneath all this, you know, evil and, you know, coming back to the EMFs and the whatever's dark stories are being rolled out that are potentially terrifying and we might be afraid of dying because of that or the slavery that goes with that. Ultimately, it's like, what am I choosing? Mm -hmm. And I know that works on a death level because I know that I chose to be here. You know, there was a choice to go for a while and a choice to come back. And you speak to anybody that has had a near death experiences or anything like that. I've experienced death. It's always a choice. Mm -hmm. Part of them says I've had enough. I want to go. I'm done. Can't do this. But then there's that another choice point where you go, well, are you sure? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to come back, you know? So, and these choices, I feel, that, that kind of, I feel like that kind of maybe kind of takes the, the anxiety away of those leaving and those staying. If we all can go, okay, what if we choose? What if that's a possibility? What if that's the truth? What if that's the reality we get to choose and everybody's allowed their own sovereign choice because we're beings of free will and you can't change somebody else because we don't want them to make that choice. You know, we can only, you know, yeah. just keep spreading the, the message that obviously there is a choice and you're not yeah, doing it. And when we look at that, Tara, at the 3D perspective, that's really what humanity is being presented with right now is a choice. Do you choose love or do you choose fear? And we can simplify it because it, there is so many levels. There is so much complexity to the timelines, the stories, the dimensions, all the things that are happening. It's such a complexly woven story that it can be really like stressful and that can cause us the anxiety and the stress and you know the sleeping disorders and eating disorders and whatever else you know the conflict we've we've got going on but we can level that playing field and come back to what is really simple and i find that the answers are really in that simplicity mm -hmm. it's just taking remembering to just take a simple deep breath letting go of the tension of the trying to control or trying to steer or okay what am i going to choose for me right now just on a simple level I'm going to choose to breathe I'm going to choose to feel my heart I'm going to choose to live and it can all just calm everything down and then we can just relate on that level like coming back to the inner child like laura was saying and the simplicity and it it's just so much easier i guess that's what that round table thing you're talking about is like oh we can all relate we're all equals here <laughs> we are all equals there is no us and them we're all in this amazing symphony that's playing out together and uh, it, it's supremely beautiful just to feel it in that level and i feel like that's where we can ride any transitions we can ride any waves we can ride any potential periods of darkness paula because you mentioned that earlier and it's stayed in my mind because i saw that coming like 10 years ago and i'm like is that really going to happen but you know what i mean it's like all these potentials of fears that could happen is 5g going to take over all of these potential fears and it's like we can unplug from that not be creating it to happen with our fear and our worry you know because what we focus on actually manifests what we focus with our worry and our fear on actually creates more of that so just coming back to the simple coming back to that breath and just being yeah bringing it bringing it home to the heart it's time to come home it mm -hmm. so needs to be time for everyone and yeah, yeah exactly so just looking at the time here magenta to all the folks that are listening, is there one piece of guidance that you would like to share as we wrap up this fabulous round table? And I'm so grateful that uh, we got to come together. What would you like to share? Or is there one piece of it? Did you say one piece of advice? No, just if you, could, if you could share one thing as we, as we end our first round table together, what would you like to share? I think really what I'd like to share is understanding multidimensionality and integration as i said earlier the third dimension and understanding what that is the physical world what's going on there the fourth dimensional system the fifth dimensional system or higher dimensional whichever model you want to use and integrate the physical reality and the feelings that you have in the physical reality the emotional body and mm -hmm. then 
everything that's being said here about the higher dimensional viewpoint. So understanding that in the physical level, things look chaotic, they look really difficult, they look as though um, it's presenting too, ch too much of a challenge that we can't cope and it's okay to be up and down. It's okay to feel really despairing and cry one minute, like you said, and feel elated and happy and hopeful the next. I've got friends one minute they're telling me I cried myself to sleep all night. The next day I'm so happy I've been in the forest all day on my bike, you know, <laughs> so go with that sine wave, that movement and take yourself to the higher viewpoint as well, where everything is done, everything that Tara just said about coming back to that simple piece and taking the breath, is integrating all of those things. And like um, Nina said, bypassing is a big thing at the moment in the new age community. So don't just sail off to the high love and light and forget that we have work to do on the physical level. I think integration of the multidimensionality of life is a, a, a focus for us right now and to be able to move within that at will understand forgive ourselves don't beat ourselves up when we have a bad day stay within that power i think multi-dimensionality and integration is key thank you thank you Chrissy. Um, i want to share with whoever's watching and with you that we mustn't forget the power of intention. So we don't have to have all the knowledge and information yet on what we need to do. All we need to do is set simple intentions in the morning and just watch the universe respond to our needs. Mm -hmm. Lovely, beautiful, thank you. Nina. Uh, I would like to say, don't forget that love is really the most powerful force in the entire universe and all of existence and love always 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 trumps fear yeah. it just constantly wherever your fear is wherever that sadness is bring in the love love all of those aspects of you that are grieving and mourning or are angry just like you would love a child there's also please nurture your inner child because a lot of our inner children are going through so much right now. Um, and you use your art therapy, use your journaling, get those toxic emotions out. Don't deny them. That's what this is. We need to face all of that and integrate it with bringing in the light, not by bypassing it right. and meditate. Go inside and meditate. Oh, wow, that's a big one. Thank you, Nina. Tara. Yeah. I'm going to completely back that one up. Um, Self-love is, for me, the ultimate key to everything. And I've been lost in darkness in multi-different places, even in death. And the most grounding, most secure, most incredibly enlightening self-realization, forgiveness, empowering place to be is when I learn to love all that I am, all that I am, mm -hmm. including and especially those parts that I thought that were the most unlovable, most unbearable. Mm -hmm. And to deeply like be humble because love humbles us. And, you know, and even Einstein, you know, his greatest understanding at the end of the day was love is the most powerful force in this universe, right? So he was a pretty clever guy. So I think we can go with that. One, you know? And actually, but to, to tap into that force within that is the unconditional absolute love that is all and that it's who we are and complete the cycle. So instead of the attention going out there all the time, trying to find the answers and the solutions and the power and just put it back here, just plug back in tap the senses back into oneself, plug mm -hmm. back into the innate inner wisdom, inner truth that, of that love, of that power. And the cycle completes itself when we come home to that which we are. And it's really simple and anyone can do it. And even just saying these words, hello me, I love you me. And just coming back in um, is going to solve so many problems for people everywhere. And it's so simple. So thank you so much for sharing everything wonderful words of wisdom 
from some absolutely beautiful people. I'm so grateful. And I feel like there's nothing left to be said except bring it home to the heart. It's time to come home yeah. where the real love resides because everything out there is chaotic and noisy and loudy, loud, unplug, bring it in. And the silence is where our guidance, our guidance is the whispers on the wind. I'm mm -hmm. so grateful. Thank you so much for coming together. God bless you all. Mm -hmm. Tara, Nina, Chrissy, and Laura, thank you so much. God bless you.